really appreciate your making the time and what happened to the slide. Well, it's on that one anyway. Um, okay, so uh, uh, firstly, I'm a venture capitalist, not a traffic engineer, but I've had a lifelong fascination with traffic congestion which is, and why governments often fail to rectify it. This isn't even my main hobby, and I work out of my home, so this barely affects me, but, but I used to commute via 101 to Mountain View, so I have a lot of experience with this, and I'm seeking other people to take up the cause. But I can't stand to see people's lives wasted when it's avoidable. And I believe that this is. So my hypothesis is that these traffic woes that we're having in the Bay Area are a function of human design errors. It's not just lack of money for building infrastructure. If spending $70 million makes traffic and safety both worse than it would have been without such spending, and if this is common and not rare, then no amount of money will save us. Fixing the bad thinking is the only solution. My goal is not only to mitigate this fiasco, but to prevent the ongoing tragedy nationwide. It's not just here in the Bay Area. Around 2002, Menlo Park and Caltrans replaced the Marsh Road interchange. That, uh, that's the main interchange that I use, and it converted from a cloverleaf to a partial cloverleaf called uh, abbreviated Parklow, and that conversion is similar to, to Willow. It made things much worse. I was baffled as to why, but it was a fait accompli, so I didn't look into it. Uh, 13 years later, in 2015, in Mr. Roadshow article, I, I read about the plan for the Willow Road one, and I started to look into it, and the reasons I got for it were baffling and nonsensical. And it was already clear that the experts, i.e. our government, had failed us. And so my hypothesis was that it was a mistake, but I sought out valid reasons. Even after a five-hour meeting at Caltrans, the rationale still remained flawed, and I couldn't really make progress. So the premises were flawed. This is the screenshot from the presentation that was given last uh, December. The project need is uh, about short merges and insufficient vehicle storage and bike and pedestrian. So, from East Palo Alto's website, it's uh, similar deficiencies impacting motors, bicycles, and pedestrians by eliminating traffic weeds and providing adequate space for vehicles to stack on freeway off-ramps. You may ask what this really means. So the short weaving segments, that's the uh, entering traffic from the entrance crosses over with the exiting traffic to the exit loop. It's scary. Some accidents result. And in some interchanges, the congestion to an exit loop can cause the entering traffic to be delayed by crossing the queue. This does not appear to be the problem here at Willow but it is the main premise. And there's a question if, as to whether it causes congestion on 101. If so, it can be mitigated by adding an auxiliary lane. The reduced throughput of a partial cloverleaf won't improve that. If you have a look at typical traffic as shown by Google Maps, you can see the traffic is not underneath the interchange on the highway. It's, this is in the PM rush hour. This, the traffic is all as a result of the exit being congested. As Yogi Berra said, you can observe a lot by just watching. D and the delay is not from short weaving segments. So this partial cloverleaf leaf is similar to Hillsdale exit. The northbound 101 traffic headed for this San Mateo bridge there takes the Hilldale, Hillsdale Boulevard as a shortcut. The two-lane queue spills way back onto 101, and the westbound traffic must wait in the eastbound queue. So th that conversion was in 2002. I suggested repainting the road to a solid line in my meeting with them. That happened more than a year ago. And they said, we don't have a process for that. So the problem persists. I, it, it, just as uh, gridlock has a shorthand name, I, my name for this is called, I call it hogging. And both hogging and gridlock are a problem at Marsh, and you can expect that they'll also be a problem at Willow once the change is made. Both cause enormous frustration and stress, and elevated cortisol levels are unhealthy for people. And cloverleaves are immune to both. This is an aerial view of the Hillsdale 101, which shows the issue for the benefit of those who can't see that as clearly. This is a close-up showing the left turn, the westbound lanes approaching the, the traffic light empty, the right, uh, the eastbound full, and those, but uh, further up, the traffic that would like to go into the westbound lane can't get to it because it's all congested by people heading east. The same problem exists at Marsh. The same problem is likely to exist at Willow unless this is somehow addressed. I posted a video on YouTube of this. So bicycle safety, as George Centineo said, those who cannot remember the past and condemned to repeat it, Hillsdale Boulevard was converted, as I said, as in 2002. They're currently planning to put in a bike pedestrian bridge. Why? Because it's not so safe after all. This is from an article in 2014. Someone is hit by a car while walking or biking across the interchange at least once every four months, according to the collision data summarized in their report. 68-year-old Palo Alto resident Theodore Hintz was struck and killed by the driver of a Caltrans vehicle in December 2009 while he was bicycling on Hillsdale. So 
it's not as safe as you may have been told. And also from the, that article, the key thing is that this should have been done 12 years ago, exclaimed resident Jim Whittemore at last week's community meeting, referring to the interchange partial cloverleaf relief reconstruction in 2002. Safety pedestrians and cyclists got a lot worse and it still hasn't been fixed. So they don't seem to be the solution that they, they're claimed to be. So 22 months ago, I sent you all a memo in which I cited reduced uh, throughput. And last year, Caltrans made a presentation and uh, Sean Azari attempted to rebut my claim of reduced safety by cherry picking the data from Tully Road where they did a, a conversion. And his data interestingly showed um, how many miles driven before and after. The throughput of that from after converting it to a partial cloverleaf was reduced almost in half by 46%. Here's this, his slide from that presentation zoomed in on the right, you can see the uh, the first arrow points to 87.5 million vehicle miles driven in the three-year period and then down below 41.8 million vehicle miles driven in the 32-month period after the construction so dramatically reduced throughput but what about safety last month peter otaki opined that short merge is not safe in my opinion it there's a counterintuitive conclusion from this wonderful book named traffic uh, which is that what makes us scared makes us stay safe and vice versa so i don't doubt that some accidents occur there the question is just in the aggregate how many comparing clover leaves and partial clover leaves and this was not the first conversion of a cloverleaf to a partial cloverleaf. Surely there must be studies that compare safety, but I've not been able to find more than one, nor has Caltrans. And so everyone cites this 1999 study by the Virginia Transportation Research Council in which it said a smaller percentage of angle accidents, i.e. T-bones, occur at full cloverleaf, 2%, than a partial cloverleaf, which is 24%, probably due to the absence of turning movements at the full cloverleafs. T-bones and head-on collisions are much more dangerous than side swipes, uh, but I could not find any safety studies that counted the number of injuries of total accidents. I filed a CPRA request to Caltrans. No response after many requests until pressured from the governor's office and a state senator, a friend of mine, and the response they give was not really useful, but I did find some useful data in the tour that they provided, the traffic operations analyst report of, on this interchange. And buried on page 131 is this data, which I'm going to uh, whiz through because this, I assume, will be a public record point is that it, it's a lot worse. Uh, sorry, to be clear, what that was a comparison of is Willow Road is a lot safer than Marsh Road. Marsh Road is a partial cloverleaf. Willow here was still a cloverleaf. So a commonly asked question, why challenge this so late? Well, actually, this has been challenged since 2013, but nobody's reacting to the bogus non-answers that were given. So my challenging it started in 2015, same story, I got bogus non-answers, and I was not the first to question this. During the public comment period in 2013, there was an insightful comment posted. Is that the fr oh, Thanks. Please turn in your card, and that would be great. Thank you. So during the public comment period in 2013, there was an insightful comment made, which is on page 112 of the uh, EIR, and it's hard to read this, so I'll Nancy Edelson, who's a member of the East Palo Alto Public Works and Transportation Commission, said, this project is a mistake. For the most part, the present overpass configuration works as is. People and cards cooperate and weave smoothly. The cyclist and pedestrian problem uh, can be solved by a separate overpass. And their Caltrans's non-responsive response was, Please refer to the purpose and needs sections of Chapter 1, as well as discussion of future traffic conditions with and without the project on the traffic and transportation section of Chapter 2. Uh, I'll just let me summarize by saying blah, blah, blah. It, it, they really did not address this whatsoever, and they did not address the suggestion that they leave it as is and just make a bike pedestrian bridge. And this is the standard for all of my interactions with Caltrans and Mental Parks transportation people. So they, and, you know, it raises the question, do they not understand the questions, or maybe they just don't have answers? If so, it's likely that the questioner's questions were the right ones and still need to be answered. The absence of good answers mean that the best course of action would be to refer it to a cloverleaf, or at least it needs to be properly analyzed as soon as possible. So what would help? Reversion to a cloverleaf is, is one. It's emotionally difficult to accept that it was all for naught, but an alter, another possibility is just to add back an exit loop for northbound 101 so the Magdalene Park residents can return home faster, or another would be to create two exit lanes on 101 north uh, for eastbound and segregate the exit lane for the westbound. So I shouldn't pretend to have all the answers. I mainly have the questions, and these are hypothetical answers, but there may be better ones. So what would solve the problem overall? 
Look at the region and focus on the bottlenecks. Address them in the correct order. So for the PM rush hour, the Bayfront Expressway at 84 University Avenue and then the Bayfront Expressway at 84 Willow Road. If you if you look at, uh, this is typical traffic for a Wednesday at 5.40 p.m. and you can see that the traffic after the University Avenue uh, intersection is orange, before it is red, and then if you look at the Willow Road one, after it is red and before it is dark red or maroon. Those two intersections, if they were to be decongested, would enable vehicle storage on the bridge instead of in Menlo Park. So that would be the right thing to do. This is all a consequence of the Willow Expressway not happening. That was the 1970s plan to connect Willow to Sand Hill Road. The NIMBY problem has finally hit the fan, and a potential solution is tunnels paid via tolls. Um, I have three more minutes left, right? Yes. I, okay. So the cost of tunneling has declined. Easy pass and license plate readers reduce the transaction costs associated with it. And it's not so crazy. Elon Musk formed a company to pursue tunneling named The Boring Company. And incidentally, I should add, I have met and can connect you with a, a company that provides private financing for private-public partnerships that could finance such a thing if, they, if it can be funded via tolls. So. It's never too soon to think about the entrance and exit locations on El Camino, and so uh, I suggest for the, on the northbound side of El Camino, in front of the new Stanford development, since this is now up in the air again, that would be the ideal place. And so self-driving cars and automated vehicles, they are around the corner. They would benefit from continuous flow and minimal accelerations. A larger turning radii al um, allow maintaining momentum and minimizing nausea of the uh, passengers, and they're much more energy efficient not to have to stop. So. We are entering the asymptote of this is a graph that shows the relationship between congestion as measured in time and queuing of cars and the volume of cars. And so as more and more gets added, the, uh, the consequence in terms of time wasted grows up uh, exponentially. And we are in that an asymptote. And so this is going to become a more and more important issue. The good news is that as when you're in the asymptote, small improvements result in dramatic improvements in time saved. Uh, it's not all bad. Another hypothesis that would be in the best interest of Menlo Park residents for the city manager and the three members of the Menlo Park City Council who like this project to return my emails and phone calls. You know who you are. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, that's it. Thank you very much.